It's the Voice Breakdown Show with our very special guest from New York Speech Coaching, Brennan Hodek. Yay! Today we are going to be talking about the man himself, or the frog himself. Uh, Kermit the Frog. You know we couldn't get through a Muppet series without talking about Kermit. Not only is he the most popular Muppet, he's also a very popular voice impression. Everyone has their own Kermit impression, and every impression is a little bit different. This is partly because three different voice actors voiced Kermit over the years, beginning with the late great Jim Henson, followed by Steve Whitmire, and more recently, Matt Vogel. Each of their renditions is a little bit different. Our goal today is to stay true to the spirit of Kermit and do a voice that combines the common elements from each of these three versions. You know the deal. Figure out six components and you can learn Kermit's voice. Let's break this voice down. Component number one, the vocal cords. Out of all the Muppets that we've worked on so far, Kermit is the easiest in terms of what the vocal cords themselves are actually doing. Kermit's voice requires a very neutral pitch. Unless your voice is very low-pitched or very high-pitched, your normal speaking voice will do just fine for Kermit. There are some times when Kermit's pitch raises, such as when he gets very excited and says, yeah! Next up, the larynx. Similar to the vocal cords, there is nothing extreme about Kermit's larynx position. It is raised, but that slight raising of the larynx will come naturally when we make the necessary changes to the tongue, which we will discuss next. One interesting thing about Kermit's larynx position is that it sometimes will descend when he's saying certain things. Every other Muppet we've discussed so far has a static larynx position, but for Kermit's, sometimes it will drop. Mm, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. No. Mm, I don't know. You can see the larynx dropping as I do that. The tongue. Like all of the Muppets we've discussed, Kermit's voice has some of that tongue clench. You need to clench or flex the back of the tongue to get that Kermit voice. Make sure to check out episode number one, where we talk about tongue clench more in depth. Once we have this tongue clench, it really starts to sound like Kermit. In fact, the tongue clench is the defining characteristic of Kermit's voice. We need to be careful to have a nuanced degree of tongue clench. Too little, I know Kermit the Frog, it won't sound like Kermit, and too much, I know Kermit the Frog, it also won't sound like Kermit. It needs to be just right. Uh, I know Kermit the Frog. The soft palate. The soft palate is an often overlooked aspect of Kermit's voice. Many impressions of Kermit sound something like this. I hope Kermit the Frog here. And that impression definitely has some Kermit-esque qualities to it, especially that tongue clench we hear. But that voice is just way too dark sounding. If you listen to Kermit's voice, it has a much greater degree of brightness to it. So how do we add that brightness to the voice, but maintain that throaty, tongue clench quality? Bring in the soft palate. If we lower the soft palate and allow sound to enter into the nasal cavity, we'll bring back some of that bright shine to the voice. That will make Kermit's voice sound a lot less like, I hope Kermit the Frog here. And a lot more like, uh, I hope Kermit the Frog here. To be fair, some of that brightness will be achieved by the raising of the larynx that we discussed earlier. Component number five, articulation. There are certain sounds that Kermit over-articulates. Specifically, the vowels E, U, and O are typically over-articulated. Instead of saying E, say E. Instead of saying U, say U. And instead of saying O, say O. Also, make sure to really over-articulate the er sound. We want to pull that tongue back into that er position whenever we hear that sound. Finally, we need to talk about prosody. There are certain elements to his prosody that are very distinctly Kermit. One of these is that he tends to throw 
filler words and phrases into his speech. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I am. Hmm. Well, you know, yeah, I think so. Okay. Another distinctly Kermit thing to do is to slide the pitch down within a syllable. If you listen carefully, you'll sometimes hear his pitch drop. In addition to the pitch dropping, sometimes the larynx also drops with it to give it that darker, dopier sound. Uh, you know, well, yeah, I don't know. We alluded to this earlier in the larynx section. Both these filler words and the pitch slides tend to happen when Kermit is feeling calm, shy, or being humble. As he gets a bit more excited, such as when he's introducing a guest during the beginning of The Muppet Show, his speed increases and his pitch escalates, getting higher and higher, until eventually he says, Uh, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it again. I've, I've, already, I've already done it multiple times. Uh, okay. Yay! Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal cords. For Kermit's voice, we want to have a neutral pitch. Component number two, the larynx. We want to raise the larynx just slightly. Component number three, the tongue. Like all the Muppets, we need to have that tongue clench. Not too little, not too much, but just right. Component number four, the soft palate. We need to lower the soft palate to allow the sound to enter into the nasal cavity. Component number five, articulation. We want to over-articulate U, E, O, and ER. Finally, component number six, positive. Make sure to use plenty of those filler words and have the pitch descend at the end of some of his words. Thank you for watching New York Speech Coaching's Voice Breakdown, episode number five, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. See you next time! <laughs>